Mental health now, hate crimes inside schools are on the rise. There's a new federal report and it finds that most incidents happen among students younger than the age of 18. Here to talk about that is Dr. Michelle de Blasi, a psychiatrist at Tufts Medical Center. Good to see you, doctor. Hey, doctor, it's great to see you. So this is the first time actually the FBI has broken down its hate crime data by the type of school. So as we get these results, what are you learning from those results? Yeah, so I think the biggest takeaway that's really concerning is that hate crimes are on the rise in our schools. Uh, and what was really alarming is that the biggest rise is actually in the younger generation. So we're talking about elementary school kids, middle school. Uh, and so this data is really quite concerning for us. And that's young, for sure. Yeah. The American Academy of Pediatrics doctor has um, referred to racism and other forms of discrimination as a disease. Is that something that you agree with? You know, I really think that racism is certainly like a disease in the fact that oftentimes it's passed down from generation to generation. And we know that kids, even as young as two years old, start to be aware of racial biases, and those can start to become internalized and actually hardwired into their brain. And the other concerning thing about racism is it's not only like a disease, but it can actually cause disease. So we know that uh, people who experience racism uh, themselves or even who have witnessed racism can have chronic stress that can lead to higher rates of anxiety disorders, depression, and even substance use disorders. So doctor, the FBI says that it hopes that the report can actually help school administrators, you know, knowledge is power, to help them mitigate or prevent future hate crimes at school. So in your opinion, is that a, is that a worthy goal? It's certainly it's a worthy goal. Is it an obtainable goal? And where do you start? Yeah, I really think that school administrators need to focus on first off making sure that their school is a really nice place for inclusion, where differences are celebrated, um, and then from there, it's doing a lot of deep reflection work on if there are racial biases that are happening that you may not be even be aware of, whether they're in your curriculums, in how people are managing their classrooms. So doing a sort of a deep dive into that to kind of figure out solutions. And then I think the other really important thing is making sure that your school is an open place where people can feel comfortable discussing things, talking about cultural differences, talking about racial biases they may be experiencing experiencing being open and talking about things leads to positive changes it sure does yeah, always great steps dr yep. de blasi thank you so much stay well thanks doctor take care